Hi everybody, this week I wanted to talk about telescope magnification. So how much magnification would a telescope like this one or this one give you? Um, so there's a bit of maths involved, so we'll dive straight in. Now, the theoretical complete magnification of a telescope is given by 2 times the diameter. Which equals the total magnification. So if, for example, we take this telescope, which has a diameter of 114 millimetres, so we know that the diameter is 114, so 2 times that will give 228 times magnification. Now that means that the maximum theoretical magnification that this telescope that's provided it didn't have any optical errors um, such as chromatic aberration and uh, spherical aberration from the mirrors and so on. Um, that would be the theoretical maximum that you could get from a scope like that. Now let's have a look at this little tabletop Dobsonian here. So this has a focal length of 300 millimeters and a diameter of 76. So for this one it would be 2 times 76, which gives us 152 times magnification. Now, that's fine, and in theory, that's what these telescopes can deliver. However, the reality of that is very different. So what we need to work out is what type of eyepiece will deliver that much magnification for each of these telescopes. So in order to find out what size eyepiece will deliver this total magnification figure here, what you have to do is get the focal length of the telescope and divide it by the total magnification. So let's do that. So I know that the focal length of this telescope is 900 millimeters. And of this telescope, is 300 millimeters. So therefore, I'll quickly do the math, so 900 divided by 228 oops, 28 equals a 3.9 millimeter focal length eyepiece. So in order to, to get the total magnification of 228 times, you have to use a 3.9 millimeter or a 4 millimeter, I'll round that up, 4 millimeter focal length eyepiece, which is interesting. So let's go through this one now. So we've got 300 millimeters focal length divided by 152. Now this is going to be a ridiculously small figure. So this is divided by 152 millimeters, which gives a 1.9 millimeter focal length, which is basically two millimeters. Now, the reality of using these two sort of entry level scopes is you would never use a two millimeter focal length eyepiece with either of these, or even a four millimeter would really struggle because I know for a fact that although I love these scopes and they're great fun and they're really, they're particularly this little one, brilliant for kids, um, they're absolutely terrible with a really short focal length eyepiece. In fact, this one is probably at its best with a 15 millimeter eyepiece. And this one, you could use sort of a, an eight or a five millimeter eyepiece but then you're beyond the limits of the scope itself. It's just optically not that good. So what is a good place to start? With eyepieces for these particular scopes, it's always best to work out the magnification before you start. Now as a good rough uh, guide, I'm going to use a 25 millimeter eyepiece as an example. I'm going to use a 15 millimeter 
and I'm also going to use a 8mm as well. I'm going to work out the theoretical maximum magnification that each of these three will give you. So we'll start off with our 900mm scope and then we'll look at our 300mm focal length scope. Now the way in which you work out your magnification is you divide 900 by 25 and that will give you the amount of magnification. So for 900 divided by 25 that gives 36 times magnification which is a lovely wide field of view and I would always recommend using a 25 millimeter eyepiece for finding subjects. For a 15 millimeter eyepiece, we divide 900 divided by 15, and that gives a 60 times magnification, which is slightly more zoomed in, but it's still really quite a wide field of view, and you begin to really see the detail on things like the moon with that. Now, for 8 millimeters, you would divide 900 divided by 8 millimeters, and that gives you 112, I mean it's 112.5 times, but 112, 113 times magnification, which is really zoomed in, and um, it, it would look great on the moon, but it would be a bit too zoomed in to find anything easily. Now for the small Dobsonian scope here, we'll go through exactly the same. So 300 divided by 25 gives 12 times magnification. So again, that gives a lovely wide field of view and uh, really easy to find objects. So then we'll go on to the 15. So 300 divided by 15 gives 20 times magnification. Again, a bit more zoomed in and it would look great on the moon. So that one for 15 mil would be brilliant. And then 300 divided by eight would give 37.5 or 38 times which again would be very, very zoomed in for this particular size scope and you're at the limits really of the optical system on these, this little telescope here. So which eyepiece would you go for when you're starting? So if you're starting out trying to find objects, the eyepiece to go for is a 25 millimeter eyepiece. Because if you go too zoomed in, if you choose say an eight millimeter eyepiece, you will find that the slightest movement of the telescope will, have, um, will make it very difficult to find the objects as you sweep across the sky. So a wide field of view with low magnification is what you need to start with. So I recommend starting with a 25 millimeter eyepiece. Once you've found your subjects like the moon or a small planet, you can then go to a more zoomed in eyepiece in order to increase your magnification so that you can see a bit more detail. Um, so generally, you always start with 25, center your subject, and then move on to the higher magnifications. Now what happens if you've got um, a telescope which doesn't have a mirror, so a refractor telescope? The mathematics is exactly the same. It's still two times the diameter of the actual lens. So I have um, a 102, millimeter times by two would give 204 times magnification theoretical maximum times for my refractor which has a 102 millimeter lens and what about Barlow lenses well when you get a, a small telescope like this and this one here they tend to come with um, say a two or three times Barlow lens and what a Barlow lens does is it takes the um, focal length, which on this one is 900 millimeters, and it doubles it or triples it according to the number that's on the Barlow. So for example, here we have 900 millimeters and we times it by, let's say, a two times Barlow, which gives 1800 millimeters focal length with a two times Barlow lens. Now we know that the theoretical maximum magnification from this scope is going to be 228 because the mirror was 114 times by two 
which gave 228 millimeters. So that's the theoretical maximum. So we now need to divide 1800 divided by 228. So when we work that out, 1800 divided by 228 gives 7.8 or 8 millimeter eyepiece. So to achieve the maximum magnification with a two times Bala lens, you would want an 8 millimeter eyepiece and a two times Bala lens. But again, at 228 times, you're massively zoomed in on this scope and it's really borderline whether you'd actually achieve good resolution with a telescope like that. Although a Barlow lens will increase the magnification, it does introduce more glass into the optical chain here, which decreases the brightness of the subject and it also introduces more optical defects. So adding a Barlow lens does double or triple or whatever the number is, for the magnification, it does increase it, but it's far better to use a smaller focal length, higher quality eyepiece than it is to use a Bala lens in the optical chain if you can help it. I hope that was useful. I wanted to do a quick uh, piece on different magnifications because you see a lot of people asking about how you can work out the magnification from your scope and what it's capable of doing. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, take care and stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.